So we just finished the river activity and we came to the realization that for this example the vertically stratified or if we stratified by column that would be the best or most representative sample we could come up with because apparently uh, the yield kind of depend on how close uh, the plot was to the river. So if we could just get a representation from each one of those um, vertical columns uh, that gave us our best overall random sample. Uh, so to finish these notes off another really important definition is what is a stratified random sample and how is it different from a simple uh, just a simple random sample. The stratified random sample is a little more specific in that we're going to classify the population into some sort of groups. There are strata. So strata, another word for groups, hence the word stratified. We're going to start by classifying this population into these specific groups and then we're going to sample randomly within each one of those groups. So we're going to take an SRS within each one of these specific groups, whatever we define, whatever those groups may be, and then those results, our little SRSs within each one of those groups, um, that's going to give us our overall random sample. So a simple random sample, an SRS, is really the most basic kind of random sample we can take. It's a simple random sample. Every population or every group of size n has an equal chance of being selected in our sample if it's totally random. Now a stratified random sample, a little bit more specific, we sort out the population to groups and then we do an SRS within each one of those. So a stratified random sample is actually a little bit more advanced than just a simple random sample. It has some simple random samples within the groups inside it. So why is it beneficial to use a stratified random sample? What exactly is the benefit and how do you choose what variable to stratify by or how to make your groups in other words? Well I think we kind of saw this uh, within the river example. The strata were the vertical columns and it was beneficial, it was more representative if we got a little random uh, sample from each one of the columns. That gave us a really good picture uh, of the overall uh, farm, if you will, without having to sample every single one individually. So, uh, for starters, the benefit, uh, it's more precise, it provides a more precise estimate. Uh, in other words, precision, uh, in this case, we take that to mean it's less variable. So the other methods we could have used for the rolling on the river activity, if we just would have done a totally random sample, a simple random sample, that gave a lot more variability and wasn't a good representation always um, of the yields. Um, the row also, a lot more variability, not a very good representation, but once we started doing the stratifying by column, then it was a lot more precise uh, and everybody within the class started to get um, results that were closer to the true mean and results that were a, a lot closer together in general. And then how do we know what to make the groups or, or how do we know what to stratify by? What variable should we choose? So in essence, we need to pick the best predictor of what we're measuring. So pick the variable that is the best predictor on what you're measuring. Uh, in the river example, it was the column, the vertical uh, grouping that worked for our strata. Uh, another example, if I'm going to do the average height of a Lake Park senior, um, there's a big difference probably between the average height of boys and girls. So I could do gender as strata. Also, uh, the average height of freshmen is going to be a lot different than the average height of seniors. So I could do your age, what class you're in as well. Um, so how do you know what to stratify by? You want to get good results. You're doing this for a reason to make your, your sample a little bit more specific. We want to pick the best variable that's with the best predictor of what we're measuring. Example 2 here says an AP stats class at LPHS is conducting a survey of LPHS students to estimate the average amount of time students spend doing homework each night. Within this study, what are some examples of appropriate strata? And there's all sorts of ways you could look at this. I'm sure you could probably come up with some on your own. Um, just a few off the top here. Um, the one we just mentioned was the class that you're in. So your age, whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, um, that could make a big difference on the average amount of time you spend doing homework. Uh, something else to consider, uh, are you in AP classes versus non-AP classes? Right away, that seems like it would make a big difference uh, as far as how much time spent doing homework. Another variable you might consider 
as far as free time goes is does someone have a job versus someone who doesn't have a job? Those are two different strata uh, and ways to group the population to get an idea about um, the LPHS students doing homework. And one more here, how about athletes versus non-athletes um, as far as homework time goes? And then one last little caution here. Uh, do not confuse simple random sample, which is the SRS, with a stratified random sample. Um, even though they have the same initials, you can make the same acronym. So simple random sample, that's the basic one, that's the overall one. That's the one that gets to have the initials SRS. Stratified random sample, that's the one that's more specific. The one we get groups and we do an SRS within those groups. Um, so that one is a little bit more advanced than just an SRS. So don't, go ahead, don't confuse those. I know we have a lot of vocab terms in this chapter, but that's something we definitely have to keep straight. All right, that's all for these notes. I'll see you in class.